Welcome today guys to the second episode of my podcast where we're going to be reviewing the 2018 Belgian Grand Prix and all of the incidents that happened during the race. So now we'll go through the midfield teams and first starting off with McLaren. Now obviously that lap one accident did take out Fernando Alonso who was McLaren's only hope of points and excluding that McLaren's race or race weekend rather was very very poor they had no pace in the car at all and I really hope they are focusing on 2019 I really do hope they are because if they're not that McLaren is possibly the worst McLaren of all time or one of the worst uh Nib what do you think about the McLaren car in terms of pace it is so poor right now there's nothing to say on McLaren Next up is Renault, who were also very poor. Now, me and Nib coming into this Belgian Grand Prix did not think Renault would be good, but they were especially bad this weekend. Yes, the Renault in a straight line is not good, but to be this far off of, say, the Honda-powered Toro Rosso, it, it's so surprising because Renault back at the Canadian Grand Prix, which is a power circuit, were best of the rest and were kind of comfortably clear of Force India and Haas and at this race they were way off Force India and Haas it just shows you how poor Renault have become and Nib I don't see how Renault as a team are going to hold on to fourth yeah Haas definitely have the momentum to go and get fourth place in the championship now a very very poor weekend by Renault and one thing's for sure if Renault have weekends like this when Ricardo is with them next season, I will not be a happy man because that was utterly awful. From Q, from the start of qualifying, they just looked absolutely horrendous, especially Sainz. He was absolutely everywhere. It's like he was driving a Williams or something. And, yeah, they still don't know what's wrong with the car in terms of the setup, so that's a bit concerning. But hopefully they can bounce back for Monza, which they probably won't. No, I don't think they will for Monza. I think Monza, they're actually going to be worse. And maybe they might have both cars knocked out in Q1 because in a straight line again, the Renault is struggling a lot. But Force India, what a weekend they had. Third and fourth in qualifying and fifth and sixth in the race. And... Even though it is still Force India, it is a debut for the Racing Point Force India team. And what a debut it was. And hopefully, Nib, I don't know what you think, but I'm hoping that this weekend is the start of, you know, a new Force India that actually goes on to be better than podiums. And maybe, who knows, in the future, race wins now they have the investment from Lawrence Stroll. Yeah, Force India had a great weekend that's for sure. Qualifying was absolutely spectacular in Q3 with a great performance by both Ocon and Perez to get P3 and P4 on the grid respectively. And can we just mention Perez's moment through Air Rouge and then onto the top of Radion? Oh boy, that is some scary, scary stuff. That's some stuff that you'd be doing in an F1 game, not in real life. So thankfully... Perez didn't have a serious, serious crash in qualifying three. And in the race, they did the maximum they could get. Nearly took the lead at the start of the race, which mm. is absolutely mental. Just Ocon wouldn't have had enough room and he would have ended up crashing into Vettel just because of the way that Lecom is. So a terrific, terrific weekend for the, for, for the Force India boys and quite comfortably the fourth best car this weekend. Yeah, they were, and it's funny you mention about they almost took the lead going into Le Combe. They almost did that in 2015 with Perez, so they have a very good knack of getting a great run on the Camel Straight on, you know, the front-leading car, so it's great to see them doing that once again. Williams were not as bad in the race as I was expecting or you were expecting, but considering this is a power circuit, again, not very good at all. Yeah, Williams, the only real positive for me is, once again, Sergei Sorotkin. Like Will Buxton, I'm in love with him, quite honestly. I, I really, really like him. Always finding those little positives and just not being a miserable guts like Lance Stroll. 
Next up is Toro Rosso and Honda, and I have to mention Honda again. I know it sounds like I'm repeating myself, but Honda, I think this was their best race since they came back into F1 in 2015 in terms of a statement because they overtook twice on the Kemmel straight a Ferrari-powered Salva. And not only did they pass the Ferrari-powered Salva, it was actually quite easy. And I think, I don't know what you think, Nib, again, but... Red Bull must be so, so happy with seeing that. And if that happens again at the Italian Grand Prix and Honda can improve, then maybe, I don't want to curse Daniel Ricciardo, but maybe Ricciardo has made the wrong decision. But of course, Honda could get it horribly wrong like they did in 2017. But Honda right now look so, so good. A reasonably good weekend for Tor Rosso with Pierre Gasly getting two points a superb drive, good battle with Ericsson. Well, Ericsson was getting close to him towards the end, I know that much. But a very good battle between Brendan Hartley and Marcus Ericsson, where Hartley was just saying, thank you very much every time going down the camel straight. And that really did show how much Honda have improved, especially from last year, where it looked like they had taken the biggest step back since they'd come back to the sport. And... Yeah, this looks like a good decision for Red Bull, I sadly say. Then you have Haas, who had a very good race, scoring 10 points in P7 and P8 with Roman Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen. And this race was very important for Haas in terms of, in my opinion, consistency going forward because, you know, Force India have dropped down the constructors because they had to relinquish all their points. All Haas need to do now is concentrate on, on beating Renault at every race. And I think they can do so. Maybe not at Singapore, but Haas do look very good. And Nib, I think the next time we record a podcast in a week's time, Haas will be in fourth place. I don't have any doubt about it. Yeah, definitely Haas with a very good weekend. They weren't the fourth fastest team this weekend, but because of the retirements of Raikkonen, and Ricardo, they were able to get some very good points over Renault in the championship, who were absolutely dreadful, as we mentioned. And shout out to Grosjean this weekend. He had a, he had a really good weekend and he was quicker than K-Mag all weekend. So shout out to Grosjean. And finally is Salva, who I don't think were as good as I thought they would be qualifying in P13 and P14, but in qualifying they did have their issues. And then in the race, of course, Leclerc was almost, you could argue, killed by Fernando Alonso's car. But Ericsson did do well to finish in P10. And I guess you could call it a good race. But I still feel that, you know, that there, there was more points on offer at this Grand Prix. Yeah, a pretty average weekend for Sauber. But I thought they were going to be more in the points. I, know, I didn't expect Tor Rosso to be ahead of them, that's for sure. And such a pity for Charles Leclerc now, who's kind of been a passenger in the last two races being taken out in the first on the first lap of the Grand Prix. So there goes your major points scorer. And Ericsson's done a fantastic job to get points. I think that's his third points finish in the last five races. So he's been very good this season, and I don't think he should lose his seat to Giovinazzi. Finally, let's go on to the questions to end this podcast. And the first one is from JB. What has been the best performance of the season so far, in your opinion, from a driver perspective? Now, for me, it would have to be Gasly in Bahrain. I did not see that coming. I did not think Toro Rosso would be that quick. But for Gasly to qualify P6 and to finish in fourth place, and I don't think he got lapped either in that Grand Prix. So he finished on the lead lap, I think. What a performance that was. But for Nib, who do you think has put in the best performance of the season so far? I think I know who you're going to go for. Yeah, I think this is quite an easy one for me. And it has to be uh, Daniel Ricciardo's win at China with uh, the beautiful, beautiful Australian dive bombs on Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas to win the Grand Prix comfortably. The next one is from Tibor, who asks, which race will be the most exciting in the rest of the season? Now, there are some classic tracks coming up, 
And I think out of the races remaining, for me it's between the US Grand Prix, which I think always provides a good race, and the Brazilian Grand Prix. I'd probably go with Brazil more because I trust that Grand Prix to be, you know, better than the US one. So I'd say, yeah, I'd have to go for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Do you have a different one to me, Neb? For me, it has to be the US Grand Prix at Cota. For me, it always provides good racing and has churned out some classic races over the past few seasons. So it should be another good Grand Prix there. And the final question again from t Ball is, should F1 give, say, more prize money to the slower teams on the grid now? In terms of making it closer racing, that would be a good idea, but I'm afraid that's never going to happen because you have Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull and Renault all in F1, and they are never going to allow that to happen because all they think about is themselves. They do not care about Force India. They do not care about Haas. All they care about is themselves, so I'm afraid that's never going to happen. Just like a cost cap, it's never going to happen. I wish it would, but I think you'll agree, Nib, there's no chance of that happening. Yeah, I don't think there's any chance of that sort of thing happening. I think there's a much bigger chance of a cost cap happening because the big teams will still be able to spend a good amount of money, just not as much. Right, so that is it for this podcast reviewing the 2018 Belgian Grand Prix. Thanks again to Nibley for coming around for this podcast. And hopefully, Nib, the Italian Grand Prix is not a snooze fest like Spa was. That's for sure. Thanks for having me on the podcast again, mate. But anyway, guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget, guys, I will be back tomorrow with part two of this podcast. Don't forget as well to join the Chazer HDF1 Discord server. A link to that is down in the description, also with my Twitter. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think about what we discussed in this podcast. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time, it's been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.